Hello and welcome to the living room of the dollhouse for another reading and quasi commentary on The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Hugh Stelfers for January 1st, the day of the emotional organizer. That's right. And here at the top of the page is a visual representational image of the day of the emotional organizer. We have us a, an image of uh, this one's a little bit of a head scratch for me, but as far as I can tell, it's. Uh, what looks to be a kind of butcher's block, a wood butcher's block, with a suggestion as to which way it should roll. Now, is that an adequate representation of the day of the emotional organizer? Hey, who's to say? But maybe as we get on with the read, we'll make some kind of connotation as to why they chose as much. Uh, that being said, that's not altogether all too important, considering it's January 1st, and that means it's somebody's birthday today. No, what's important in that case is wishing you a happy birthday. That's right. Wishing you happy birthday. Now, if the, uh, I don't know, the video happens to find you a little late, I don't know, days, weeks, months, whatever the case may happen to be. Well, if that is the case, I just want to say, I hope you had a happy birthday. Uh, but for everybody else who's joining us randomly or more ideally to celebrate the January 1st birthday, I just want to say hello, welcome, and I hope you enjoy yourself. Now, before I dive in with the redirect, something I like to do around these here parts, and that's roll some dice. That's right. This is the Diecast birthday broadcast, so I like to live up to the namesake by rolling some dice. That's right. But I do so, more importantly, for synchronicity's sake. All right. Here I rolled a four and a three, four and a seven. Now, what is synchronicity, you're probably wondering? Uh, well, folks, a lot of times we get out in the world, getting after our various errands or the things we need to do, just maybe commute to the job, and we're very singular of focus. Uh, that being said, I've heard it told the universe will put things down in our path to help us uh, realize our goals or aspirations. But we need to know how to look for those things, I would say. But oftentimes, since we've got those blinders on, we may miss them altogether. And so this is a, a little bit of an exercise, if you like, with how to start seeing the things the universe puts down in your path with a very unmistakable sign that we hopefully can't miss. That's right, some daily numbers. Now, you don't have to go with the numbers I rolled for you, but uh, it's probably advisable you take your own set of dice so you can ascribe directional values to number sets as well as time limits with which to go in those directions. That said, after you have figured out your daily numbers, your directional values, and your time limit for your first little leg of this mission here, uh, you set off from whatever particular place you wish to start from. I don't know, say the town square. But once you do this, like I said, get those blinders off. Start soaking up everything around you like a sponge. Stay eagle-eyed for things. You never know what you may or may not see. That's right. Uh, and the day might start to take on a theme with as much. Maybe you start seeing butcher block wheels in various places. I don't know. Pretty random, right? But uh, that could be the case because maybe they were there all along. It's just something we never really took note of. But uh, something eclectic like that, hey, I would certainly take mention or notice of and carry it with you because you never know it might just start popping up everywhere that said maybe on your first little leg of this journey your first time limit uh directional value you're not really seeing anything well uh, once you reach the end of that time limit maybe stop compose yourself and just look around see what you see maybe you just so happen to notice the street sign is it shows that you're on 7th or 34th avenue who's to say that's one of your numbers i would take that as a sign you're on the right path. That's right. So roll yourself another directional value, even if you don't see anything, um, and, you know, take off in that direction. Maybe it just so happens you uh, catch a, a hint of something on the air there. Maybe something that takes you back to your childhood, but just as soon as you thought you smelled it, it's gone, right? So I would say just keep going with things, seeing what you see, see what you notice. Maybe uh, another directional value it takes you... Uh, you know, a northwesterly direction there for like five minutes. You get to the end of that five minutes, oh, that smells come back again, right? What is that? And you, start, you look around and you just so happen to notice maybe in front of a building with a, a 34 in the address. Hey, you know what? Take it as a sign to go in there. Maybe it's a business that doesn't really, one of those uh, buildings that has a bunch of businesses inside. It doesn't really advertise what's inside there. Well, you know what? Your uh, universal sign is telling you to go in, so head on in there. Maybe you've never been there before. And what's this? That smell just, boom, it hits you coming out of the doors there. Well, what is that? I don't remember what it is. And you see it turned to your left, and what is this? Maybe it's one of those little donut shops. That's right. That smell of the, the fresh-cooked yeasted dough with the, with the cinnamon and the sugar on the top of there. 
Hey, and who's to say, maybe it's their going out of business sale. This is the last day to buy those little donuts you remember as a child. That's right. So you get you a pack and you're just like, you're real down in the dumps that you just found this place and you're never going to be able to buy them again. But you know what I would say? The universe puts you on track to get there before they sold out. That's right. You would have never had the opportunity to relive that little memory there. Who's to say? I know it's a pretty unique case, but it could be something just like that. Maybe you need a little bit of that childhood uh, reminiscing in your life, and uh, that's a really unique little thing to maybe have in there, whatever the case may be. That said, I think you get the idea of synchronicity there, just following your numbers, looking for signs, taking on a theme. Hey, you know what? A donut hole is circular, like a round butcher's block. Hey, how about that? <laughs> then I think you get the idea. So get on out there, see, taste, touch, maybe even smell a little bit of the magic, and you'll understand understand why I suggest it as much. That's right. If you can wish anything for you on your birthday, it's that you're out there enjoying some magic, expanding your horizons, and getting those blinders off. All right, let's dive in with the birthday read, shall we? Your month is January. Your day is the first. Your sign is 10 to 12 degrees Capricorn of the Capricorn 1 period specifically, and your quality and element is Cardinal Earth. All right, January 1st, the day of the emotional organizer. January 1 people are authoritarian. They like organization and structure and must give the orders both at home and at work. They are often studious and value emotion or education rather greatly. Moreover, they stick to their convictions. And when it comes to realizing their ambitions, however, the principles of January 1 people sometimes get in their way. And although they wish to scale the heights, they are perhaps too honest, too loyal, and too honorable to do so. In valuing structure so highly, they often are hemmed in by their own orthodoxy when going by the book. Moreover, their frustration threshold is low, and it is here that their underlying, highly charged emotional nature is the most fully revealed. Many elements of the January 1 personality are not only complex, but seem contradictory. For example, those born on this day are highly responsible, yet often take more responsibilities than they can handle. They are emotional, yet can get so bottled up with their emotions that they are unable to express them. They may be liberal in their outlook, yet will come across as conservative, even reactionary. And above all, they undergo tremendous inner struggles in which they can be beset by forces seemingly beyond their control. It is extremely important career-wise for January 1 people to sit down at some point in their lives and seriously ask themselves just how high they plan on rising in their chosen field. Then, after making a complete accounting of their strengths and weaknesses, they should come to a realistic appraisal of their chance for success and set goals accordingly. Long-term and short-term goals should be clearly delineated, and timetables set and kept to, if possible. And should January 1 people decide to go for the top, they must be absolutely sure they have enough stress resistance, patience, and emotional control to get there. A disadvantage for most January 1 people is their extreme sensitivity, which can make them impatient and difficult when working as a subordinate. When interacting with friends or directing others, particularly as a teacher, those born on this day can be charming, well-liked, and effective. Uh, let's see. However, if their career plans involve climbing the corporate ladder or operating in a highly competitive and unsympathetic arena, they must truly toughen their skin and in that process grow a whole new set of buttons which few can push. And if they do so, their efforts will not be so readily undermined by their emotional reactions. Above all, it is important for January 1 people not to drive themselves and those around them too hard and too fast. And they must be particularly careful that their high expectations do not inevitably end in deep disappointments. 
And although they consider themselves practical and pragmatic, they must come to accept that they too have romantic dreams and an accompanying need to satisfy them. Thus, a realistic self-image uh, constant or consonant with their consonant rather with their emotional depth and complexity will be key to their happiness and success. All right, that was a, uh, a rather narrow a focus breakdown, but I say within the scope of that focus, they really expanded out and provided a lot of value. Uh, things of interest too, I would say. Very complex day indeed, but I think I may be getting ahead of myself here. I'd like to provide a little bit of a commentary on what we just read, so let's see what I had to say here. Uh, January 1, the day of the emotional organizer. Uh, you're an authoritarian for organization and structure, the reading claims. And you're also said to be the sort of person who renders the orders uh, to others in their lives. Uh, you are also said to stick to your convictions to the extent such principles may get in the way of realizing your ambitions. And considering how staunchly you may adhere to structure, loyalty, as well as honesty, uh, which in no small part may explain uh, why you are also said to have a low threshold for frustration. Uh, the place where your highly charged emotional nature may be likely to present itself. Um, so right from the start, the reading, uh, it dives into one of the most complex natures that I've seen related without it having to say as much, all right, before they then say as much, all right, uh, by conveying specifics with regard to a contradictory nature, a contradictory rather, uh, being responsible but uh, taking on too much responsibility. Uh, being emotional, but prone to bottling up that emotion and unable to uh, express it there. Uh, what else? Interestingly, I came to the realization uh, while reading this that I may know quite a few individuals with similar struggles. And I just didn't realize that such a thing may not be uh, as normal as I thought it was. Uh, as I may have, um, I don't know, been just chalking it up to their personality. Um, and uh, perhaps owing to how close I am to said individuals, uh, I just maybe need to have more of a detached, objective view about as much. Because maybe it's something that the, those folks need to find a way to express, kind of as the reading uh, suggests. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, having said that, the reading uh, it goes on into the structured extremes that you may need to put yourself through to realize your aspirations. Uh, and it's not something I've seen related in the book before. Uh, so it makes me think it may be something potentially necessary versus simply suggested. And I, at least the things that they recommended for you there. Uh, further recommendations with regard to how to approach friends to say uh, you're also su some subordinates as well as students. Uh, it interesting adds another unconventional addition to as much. And they really hammer down how influential your nature may be uh, on your life there. And finally, the reading concludes with further considerations to really encapsulate how your complex nature may have uh, sweeping and uh, diverse effects with another seeming contradiction of relating the pragmatic versus the idealistic uh, dynamic at work there uh, to once again kind of encapsulate what I thought was a very uh, narrow a focus, but very expansive examination of that focus of a breakdown. Um, and maybe we'll get into the reason why with your numbers and your planets. That's right, your numbers and planets. Let's get into it here. Those born on the first of the month are ruled by the number one and by the sun. And those born on the first usually like to be first. And they are of a definite viewpoint and eager to rise to the top. As already discussed, however, January 1 people do not always have the toughness and self-confidence to match their talents and potential. Coupled with Saturn, the ruler of Capricorn, sun influences can make January 1 people highly responsible, but can lead them to take on more than they can handle emotionally. All right. Said a few things that we've already heard in the breakdown, surprisingly. Uh, very personalized numbers and planets to some extent, even though it was very concise. They kind of drilled back down on a few of the things already said. Instead of just carrying it forward from the last sun number one day. Uh, that said, I might be getting ahead of myself, so let's dive into the uh, notes here. Uh, the number one in the sun for a hyper-focused dynamic specific to your otherwise trademark difficult to label 
despite the title, Nature. Uh, and I mentioned that the, some of this narrow focus might be specific to this day for a reason. Let's find out why. To say a particular trait and how it expands to affect the other facets of their lives uh, is usually a sun dynamic, all right? They'll, they'll choose some aspect of your life to say this uh, emotional uh, responsibility and then how you can't really necessarily live up to your aspirations, maybe because of that. And they've really drilled down on that dynamic. It's not like it's specific to a Sunday. Other, other sun rule days, they might get uh, like uh, sexual curiosity for, I don't know, that's not one of them, but let's just say that is. And they drill down on how that affects their life, uh, if that makes any sense. Uh, so again, maybe perhaps owing to the intensity of the sun and perhaps running in conflict with the constrictive planet Saturn, it might lend to or owe to some of these frustrations that you experience within living that, uh, with that nature, all right? Um, and I say that because almost every other planet that is, has a uh, co-rulership with Saturn, it seems to run into these frustrations here. Um, here with the sun and the saturn it kind of takes aims with responsibility uh, so that may explain uh, some concerns and issues in that area if we lend credence to astrology obviously um, but uh, that said i think this not always having the confidence or the toughness to match the talent and potential like they mentioned very interesting dynamic to encounter not one that i can remember uh, really having encountered before though not necessarily it's been a lot of days i've been reading here uh, but I also say that to say, uh, who doesn't have that effect them to some extent, right? Uh, in some way, some time or another. Uh, so I would say don't let that affect you too much if it seems to just speak to you completely um, or even just in, you know, partially. Uh, and I'd say here, one way to maybe kind of alleviate that is use it as fuel for your, uh, for your endeavors, right? Or what you want to get going or, you, or take it on as a challenge. Like, oh yeah, I've got these frustrations against me. All right, stack them up. Let's see what I can, let's see if you can really beat me down because I'm going to handle this thing. I don't know. Help drum up some determination. Face those fears if they happen to be fears or just things get in your way. And I'm, you know what? I say that just as much for you as I do for myself because sometimes it's even just the littlest things that can get in your way and keep you from doing what you want or need to get done. But that said, uh, uh, like I said, Saturn is, is a planet of responsibility, and so is the sun. And uh, here, I don't know if it's necessarily a, uh, what do you call a frustration that culminates from that. Maybe those are a shared uh, characteristic uh, between the two. And maybe that explains why you're so hyper-focused on it. Um, but uh, I think what I meant to say is that like Saturn is usually in uh, conflict with so many other planets that those frustrations present in a variety of ways. And I think I just misread the notes to say, I think the responsibility is things, something they share and it might explain why that's a trademark effect of your life or your day. Again, assuming it applies. But once again, you're not alone in your frustrations, I think is another thing I meant to say. Because like I said, all those other folks have it in conflict too. So it's the rare Saturn ruled individual that doesn't have those frustrations present. So you're not alone. Uh, that being said, that's what I had to say about your numbers and your planets. So let's move on to your tarot. That's right. One of the more eclectic of the new age metaphysical ideologies. But hey, it's here in the book. It's your birthday. Let's expand our horizons, see what it has to say. And then we just leave it in the book. Uh, oftentimes we can make some kind of uh, connotations or connections with things that have been mentioned uh, to add a little bit more interesting uh, facets to what has already been conveyed. So Sometimes not, but hey, let's see if it does. All right, your tarot. The first card of the major arcana is the magician, who symbolizes intellect, communication, information, as well as magic. That's right. And over his head is an infinity symbol, which in some tarot decks takes the form of a hat, and in others, a halo. Many interpretations may be drawn from this, one of which is that the magician recognizes the cyclical and unending nature of life and is empowered by this understanding. And the positive traits suggested by this first card include diplomatic skill and shrewdness, but negatively, a lack of scruples and opportunism. Perhaps the magician symbolizes the dilemma facing many January 1 people. A desire for success and greater utilization of their talents can demand a corresponding flexibility in their moral code. 
All right, hey, they personalize the tarot for you. Not a common thing, especially if they personalize the numbers and planets. It seems like the tarot kind of gets the short end if that's the case. But that being said, what I have to say about it here. Uh, the magician for intellect, communication, information, and magic. Uh, reconciling the cyclical natures, or recognizing rather. Well, maybe there's some uh, reconciling too. Uh, recognizing the cyclical natures of life and being empowered by such understandings, uh, which if you experience even half the things and frustrations mentioned in the breakdown, uh, even if brought on by yourself ostensibly, I would say you ha most certainly have an understanding certainly of struggle, okay? Especially if you experience what amounts to what sounds like cognitive dissonance uh, and with the give and take there. Things that seem to make sense, but yet they don't, all right? I would say it's some, one of the most frustrating frustrations, if you like, that, that exists because your mind just can't work out why it doesn't make sense, even though it should. I'm probably explaining cognitive dissonance poorly, but that's kind of what it feels like in any event. And that's what it seemed like you might have going on, at least by the breakdown there. Uh, so there's that give and take, the pro, of, pro and con of every contradiction. And so perhaps the magic is that you still come through despite all that flexibility, right? Um, or So I would say, once again, be empowered by the cyclical nature. Know that the dissonance is going to happen. If it's something that you're just always experiencing, maybe you can use it as something that's just fundamentally always going to happen or approach it from that perspective. So then the, the bother of it all maybe is a little bit lessened. Or maybe you can just have a laugh at as much. Like, here it is again. Yeah, of course. Learn to kind of embrace the things that seem to uh, weed their way into our lives constantly and we just kind of take it as it is. And then maybe we can turn it into a strength or something that aids us some, I don't know how, but in some form or matter. That's kind of uh, for you to figure out, I would say. Um, that being said, uh, what else do I have to say here? Uh, maybe take comfort in knowing that that's also part of the process and uh, that there's going to be a way through it, even if it cognitive dissonance uh, like you can't figure it out and, and things that seem to make sense don't I don't know but uh, like I said interesting dynamic uh, especially if it applies to you specifically so like I said try to embrace it if you can especially if it's never going away because uh, like I said you got to take it with you on the journey so make room for it in the pack I would say uh, that's uh, that's your tarot so let's move on to your health. All right, those born on January 1 are apt to suffer from hidden fears and anxieties. And to keep themselves from feeling alternately nervous and depressed, they may find it helpful to seek psychological advice or therapy. Physically, those born on this day must be careful about eliminative problems such as constipation, uh, which can be helped by high fiber foods, and watch their diets both as to quantity and quality. They are particularly prone to stress-related disease, particularly cardiovascular, and should eliminate smoking if possible. Reducing sugar, unbleached white flour, and animal fat in their diet is essential for their good health. In January 1, people should keep active and engage in regular but moderate physical exercise. Walking and swimming are recommended. All right, what do I have to say about your health here? Pretty well-rounded health day, I would say. Uh, let's get into why here. Uh, your health. Uh, hidden fears and anxieties, they said. Uh, who would have guessed that based on the breakdown, right? Uh, and uh, th it follows they recommend therapy uh, or they suggest uh, talking with someone. I would say even if that means just a conversation with yourself. You know, if you can't afford those kinds of things, you know what? Start doing the, the work, self-awareness, right? Meditation, those kinds of things. Anything's going to help, right? Uh, especially if you work to understand your particular dynamic. Don't just feel bad about it, right? Try to get to the root of it. Maybe learn something about yourself and analyze how you react in those situations with an objective eye. You know what? It might not sound like that's going to help you, but somehow it kind of it works itself out. Those things seem to, uh, seem to lessen as you get on just by thinking about the way through or um, how it affects you. Um, and accept it, even if it means working on uh, evolving past it. Because there's going to be a lot of work involved in that kind of thing. Uh, it's a great pocket to be in, I would say. Getting on the path to self-awareness. Um, 
They say physically eliminative problems are uh, like constipation might plague you. And I think that's the first time they've directly mentioned that particular ailment uh, insofar as eliminative is concerned. Uh, so bulk foods for diet with an eye on quality as well as quantity and sugar and animal fats, reducing those kinds of things, they said. Uh, avoiding the sugar as well, etc. And they said cigarettes too. So if you need that nicotine, switch to the gum, right? That's right. No, there's no cancer or stuff in the gum there. <laughs> what else do I have to say here about the health? Um, interesting that they drilled down on considering uh, the di or they drilled down on diet considering they mentioned the psychological aspect. Usually if psychological pops into the health, they totally ditch the diet. All right, completely. If they even make men if they make mention of it, it's just a quick little shoehorn thing. You know, avoid the drugs that affect the heart, like we said, and uh, remain active, probably both for your body and your mind. Um, it's a quick, well-rounded, but shoehorn snapshot of a health entry. To say, I think they worked in just about everything that they could. And like I said, they don't usually do that if psychology enters into it. So that said, uh, that's been your health. So let's move on to some advice. Oh, some more advice, right? As if we haven't gotten enough of that already. All right, here we go. Don't send mixed signals. All right, and be sure of what you want before you express your wishes. And share your emotions. Don't get bottled up inside. All right, lasting security is usually an illusion. All right, quick, fast in and out with the advice usually is, but I'd say they provide a little bit of uh, value in there, uh, despite going over some things, a little bit of a retread. All right, what I have to say here, don't send mixed signals, all right? Your life is seemingly defined by them based on what we read in the breakdown. And you know how stressful that can be. Don't throw it on other folks, all right? They're probably just going to compound your issues, especially if you have to deal with them day in, day out. Um, see, avoid projecting that onto the outside world. Perhaps you break the cycle within yourself. That's right, especially if you make a habit of doing as much, I would say. Try it out, at least. Uh, be sure of what you want, all right? On its face, I'd say it's kind of a careful what you wish for kind of thing. Uh, but I think it speaks more to not going with what your emotions may be driving you toward, all right? Uh, to say if you took time to be more objective, more than, say, like the knee-jerk reactions to things, uh, you, even if that's just uh, uh, reacting to things that you may think about inside yourself, not to things in the direct world. You know, just take a moment. So, is that really what's going on? It may help you out a little bit. Uh, you may arrive at something more beneficial or desirable. Just take some time, all right? Now, say share your emotions. So, therapy. And I would say even if that's discussion about the same things over and over again with a friend or somebody who's uh, open to hearing as much. Um, one of those uh, times you may just arrive at an answer, all right? Something to be said with getting sick of that same conversation uh, that you're going over and over again, maybe to some extent. Um, and uh, to say, um, maybe there's a little bit of a, a driver to say, I'm, I'm really sorry I'm having to put my friend through having to listen to all this. So there might be a little bit of a uh, uh, motivation to get over it. Like, oh, if, if they're not gonna stick around if I keep talking about the same thing. Probably not the case if it's somebody who's going to listen to it, be your shoulder crying, the same thing over and over again. But again, sometimes hearing it the 37th, 38th time, we hear it for ourselves finally, or we arrive at something we hadn't considered before. Um, so maybe that's, a, maybe that's an idea if you can't afford therapy directly. Um, see, lasting security, they said, is an illusion, all right? So don't rest on a seeming resolve, perhaps, you know, it, maybe you think something's going to resolve itself, but if you know anything about cognitive dissonance, <laughs> you know, it, it's just never going to make sense, all right? Even though your brain's constantly trying to figure it out. Uh, I would say change is constant and confusing, and if we can just accept that, uh, live with it, like I said, have a laugh about it, you're going to be doing great. Uh, to the end of therapy, I would also suggest trying to uh, drop things and let your dreams work it out. I've come to, I, there's things I was trying to work out for years that I just, I never got any traction with. And then just one dream, one specific thing, I wake up in the morning and I'm going, wow, that's interesting. It did so much more heavy lifting than even I could accomplish in that one or two years thinking about it, going over things. So yeah, take your hand off the wheel, let your subconscious do some of the work there. Use your dreams like a benchmark to see maybe where you are in life. That's how I try to do it in any event, or anyhow. That being said, that's been your advice, so let's dive in 
with a meditation. That's right, you get a meditation on your birthday. So let's get into it. It takes two to tango, but it is the best, but it is best to dance together as one. All right, totally mo mumble mouthed it. Let's do it again here for you. Don't wanna mess up your meditation. All right, it takes two to tango, but it is best to dance together as one. All right, your birthday, your meditation, I'm not gonna throw some spin or interpretation on it for you because that wouldn't be any good for you if it's just what I thought it was about. That's right, here's your meditation. It takes two to tango, but it is best to dance together as one. So your meditation having been related, let's move on to your strengths and your weaknesses. That's right, let's hold up the objective mirror, see where we've got the bulk and maybe where we're a little more atrophied. That's right. Uh, so your strengths, you're responsible, you're organized, and your competence. All right, hey, those are some good strengths to have, I would say. Responsible, organized, competent, gonna get a lot of things done, that's right. But your weaknesses, oh, let's hold that objective mirror back up and flip it to the side that blows up your face. Maybe shows off all the superficial things you're insecure about and in way of looking at it. That's right, your weaknesses. It says you're inflexible, you're oversensitive. Hey, we knew that, whatever and you're fearful. Oh, we knew that one too. Inflexible, insensitive, fearful. I would argue that those are things you can easily overcome with your strengths. That's right. Responsible, organized, competent. Hey, you know what? You're going to get things together that you need in order to improve upon those things. But I often like to argue that our weaknesses aren't always weaknesses. Sometimes they're strengths just depends on the situation. That's right. You know, it's probably good to be fearful in some situations because it keeps you more aware, more on track as to what's going on. It's kind of like that brain, that animal lizard brain or whatever they call it. Uh, they're in the stem right back there. That's right. You got to be ready to hop too, fight or flight kind of thing. So sometimes there might be a situation that uh, represents, hey, you're being fearful is going to keep you on your toes, I would say. Inflexible, again, that might be a strength in certain situations, like in the career, say. Hey, if I was to flex on this one thing, we might uh, go into the into the red on the uh, on the balance sheet there, who's to say. But that said, if uh, weaknesses are something that you want to try to tamper down or, uh, you know, cut off at the knees, if you like, altogether, hey, I would say uh, your strengths are going to help you do it. But I also like to argue uh, maybe not getting rid of them altogether is a good idea too because our weaknesses, well, they make us who we are. That's right. So just bring them back a hair. That's right. So your strengths and weaknesses having been relayed, let's move on to those born on this day. When we get into those born on this day, not only do we get to see who shares your company, but something I like to do is uh, dive into that with an eye on figuring out our passions because too often i get out in the world and meet folks and ask them what they do more importantly if they like if they like them or like it rather and they don't all right and i don't think it's something we can necessarily blame folks for get right out of school into a job to make ends meet hey there's no time in your off time to really carve out a part of your day to put the time in to figure those things out and a lot of times it requires work and time on top of what you're already doing to figure out something like your passions, sometimes what we even like to do. And so I think this is the perfect opportunity to uh, look at this uh, with that in mind, figuring out our passions. Maybe we can take some inspiration from those who share our company, see what they did to get in the book to help fuel our own fires. Because if there's anything I can wish for you on your birthday, it's that you're getting out of bed in the morning, eager to get on with your day because you're doing something fulfilling. And I would say a purpose or a passion, that's gonna help get you there for sure. So let's look at it through the, that perspective there um, and see what we see. All right, we start off with Sir James Fraser, a Scottish anthropologist and responsible for The Golden Bough. We also have E.M. Forrester, a British novelist responsible for Passage to India. J. Edgar Hoover, the FBI head for 49 years. We also have Paul Revere, the American Revolutionary War Patriot, a silversmith, and famously did the ride to warn of the British advance. Uh, we have Betsy Ross, the American Revolutionary War Patriot, and a seamstress, and traditionally credited with designing the and sewing the American flag. We also have Alfred Steiglitz, a photographer, 
Milt Jackson, a jazz vibro, uh, vibra, vibraphonist, rather, and responsible for the modern jazz quartet, or was part of it, who's to say? We also have Barry Goldwater, the U.S. Senator of Arizona and a Republican presidential candidate and writer of Where I Stand. We also have J.D. Salinger, the novelist of Catcher in the Rye. We also have Asumain Sambin, a Senegalese film director of Black Girl and The Money Order. We also have Xavier Cugat, or Cugat perhaps, a Spanish-born Latin band leader. Uh, Maurice Bajart, a Belgian choreographer and a dance company founder. We also have Oda uh, Oyida, O-U-I-D-A, not quite sure, and it's just one name, a British novelist and responsible for Held in Bondage. We also have Bully Slim Galliard, a jazz blues singer, guitarist, pianist, and a songwriter. Hank Greenberg, a baseball first baseman, four-time AL home run, an RBI leader, and a two-time MVP, and a Hall of Famer. We also have Doak Walker, um, or Doak Walker, perhaps, <laughs> more properly said. I think the L is silent. Uh, football halfback, Heisman Trophy winner, and a six-time All-Pro, and he led the Detroit, or he led Detroit rather, to two NFL titles. Or the Detroit, perhaps. Could have been a while back, who's to say? We have Dana Andrews, a film actor. Uh, Carol Landis, uh, it says Busby, Berkeley dancer. And a film actress, comic, and four husbands. Prolific in that arena, it sounds like. Uh, let's see, we have Wilhelm uh, Canaris, a German commanding general and conspirator against Hitler. Oh, talk about some cognitive dissonance there. A little bit of fear entering in there, too, for sure. And was executed, it says. All right, let's see, we have uh, Frederick Wiseman, a documentary filmmaker and of Law and Order fame. Uh, I don't know whether that's a TV show or a documentary he made, but uh, there you have it. Those born on this day. And I know it's a big-ass tall order to take uh, inspiration from other people's uh, accomplishments to help us fuel our own fires, but hey, you never know. It's just like I said, you hear something 37 times, uh, you know what, maybe it's finally going to take root. I know we didn't hear this 37 times, but I think the idea still stands. Maybe you hear like, oh, that guy was a jazz, blues singer, songwriter, guitarist, piano player. <laughs> Milt Jackson or whoever it was, <laughs> you know, okay, well, maybe just hearing that, you look into them and you learn about their life, oh, hey, it kind of stacks up against mine, I don't know, or maybe just hearing it, you're like, oh, the blues guitarist, I never thought of it, but you also had J.D. Salinger as your company, you know what, that gentleman struggled, let me tell you, and again, a lot of it kind of seemed to be at his own, you know, because of itself there, I don't know, but at least going by the documentary, so, you know what, I would say uh, we can take inspiration in all sorts of forms but uh if anything maybe just hearing as much me putting the bug in your ear about it it's gonna help you stir up the fires and get on with it because like i said if i can wish you for anything on your birthday it's that you're driving after a passion and you're finding some fulfillment in life so and you had a whole smorgasbord of people from different walks of life becoming successful and doing their thing and if you're already successful in doing your thing well my hat's off to you the hat i'm not wearing is off to you just keep getting after it and uh you know once again yeah keep getting after it <laughs> all right that being said that essentially rounds out your birthday read except to say your season is winter your sign once again is capricorn the capricorn one period specifically and your quality and element is cardinal earth now i don't know that we made any connotations with the butcher block wheel that's said to go in the one direction there interestingly enough but hey, we worked it into the uh, synchronicity example. That's pretty good, right? Pretty synchronous, if you like. And even this has been January 1st, the day of the emotional organizer from The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and you, Stelfer. So I have a link for this book down in the description. Makes a great coffee table book, especially if you're going to have company over. It's going to get the party started for better or for worse. But the conversation is going to get flowing, let me tell you. Uh, so, yeah, head on over there. Save you the hassle of typing in the browser and it supports the channel in the bargain, which I appreciate. With that being said, the book having been related, not altogether all too important in the scheme of things. And what are the scheme of things? Well, somebody's birthday, like I said at the top. So wishing you a happy birthday. That's what it's all about. Down at the foundations there. Wishing you a happy birthday. Love for everybody else who joined us, you know, to celebrate ostensibly. I just want to say I hope you enjoyed yourself and you join us for your birthday read. Uh, that being said, lest I forget, 
That's right, your daily numbers. Get out there and let the universe show you it's with you on your path. And get the blinders off. Maybe find some donuts that you enjoyed as a child that are uh, set to expire last time you can get them on that day. I don't know. It <laughs> could be. All right. But what's more important, like I said, wishing you happy birthday. So happy birthday once again. And take care of yourself. Fight that cognitive dissonance by putting it in your pack. That's right. It's uh, Leave some room for it on the journey. Or however I said it much more elegantly put. That's right. Happy birthday.